Uh. Hold the f hold the fuck on, yo. I don't even I don't even think like I think I'm being a little overstimulated. I need a I need a warm up, bro. Like you can't just start the shit off like this. Hold on, bro. I, I gotta replay this shit. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> What the fuck? Uh huh. Yo, this shit sounds like so like destructive i think is the best word i can come up with <sighs> the beat is so heavy and distorted it sounds like if they recorded an earthquake and just sampled that and made it into a boom bat beat like this shit is different bro and <laughs> i know <laughs> i know y'all gonna call me a kanye cocksucker but it sounds like some yay shit don't it let me look at the producer list real quick travis scott wonder girl mike dean Noah Goldstein and Jahan Sweet. Three of those people, Travis, Mike Dean, and Noah, have all been featured on Yeezus, I believe. So this is making sense. <sighs> Travi. And Travis, he's rapping. He sounds hungry. Oh, those fucking scents. Those fucking scents are heavenly, man. Thank God for Mike Dean. Yes. Whoa. That was a lot. Hyena. Hyena? Hyena, I think. Hyena sounded fucking ridiculous. That's some of the most like, I feel like that that reminds me of the maximalism of my beautiful dark twisted fantasy, uh, but the darkness of Jesus. I love the Mike Dean simps in the back of the song and Travis sounds hungry. I honestly didn't get a lot. I didn't pay attention to the lyrics a lot simply because the, the production was kind of just like, I was really trying to just wrap my head around it. It was a lot. It was a lot for the first track, man. Honestly, bro, I gotta listen to it again. Uh, I don't even know if my speakers properly comprehended what the fuck was going on there, but I, I like it so far. There's something really interesting about this song. It has five samples on it. It's sampling Maggot Brain, Funkadelic. I didn't hear that. And it's also sampling Funky President from James Brown. I definitely got to go back and listen to that. Drop in the comments if you guys can clip and, and tell me which parts uh, were sampled in there. But, all right. Fuck. Me and my. Oh. Still no pressure. They got Cause shit has what they need and tell them lies. But still up top, we still can't drop what they not. Ah. Still can't trade me. Oh yeah. Ah ah. Okay. Thank God. Right off the bat, this is the first track with some Kanye production. Also has Bugs the Beast, Alan Ritter, 
Wonder Girl, and F and Z. Crazy production list right there. Every time you see them producing on anything, it's probably gonna hit, bro. Right off the bat, I noticed that this one kind of went for a little bit more of a minimalist uh, style here, having just the first half with those bum bum, you know, bass and synth coming in. But it kind of created like this moment to kind of like focus on like what Travis is saying. It feels like in a movie where you're kind of introducing the main character. It almost sounds like they're introducing like a bad guy, you know what I'm saying? I kind of get in this vibe off the first two songs that Travis isn't really trying to uh, paint a picture that's pretty. But the darkness is beautiful in this, man. I, I really love those synths. Uh, that came in after that trap beat came in on the second half. And at the end of the song, uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, the sweetness of those those poppy simps. Travis on here, he's, he's sounding hungry once again. Vocally, he's not doing too much, but he's rapping on here. He's spitting. I did catch some bars on here. The first or the second verse, he's saying, got God on the line, tell the devil I'm fine. He's always trying. You know what I'm saying? So he, he he's definitely sounds like he's trying to beat the odds on here. And even on the third verse, you know what I'm saying? He, he feels like he has a chip on his shoulder. Um, he says, last tape was filled up with slaps. I guess I got to run this shit back. Then like the way this shit went down at the awards i admit it turned to a beast this that shit right here to get me going after i pop me a piece way that we killing the critics and killing the hate might gotta talk to a priest okay like he's he's really he's he's not fucking with none of the fuck shit on here kc on the chorus as well yeah man i i, I definitely like this one but i just i love how suspenseful it felt and when that trap beat came in it was it was pretty much over for me but um yeah i'm fucking with thank god thank god for yay, for the fucking production on that shit. Nah, this sounds like music you would play in a high speed chase in a flying car in 2063. Modern jam. Um, yeah, that, that sounded very modern, like to the point where it didn't sound like it was for this year. It was it was for 2086. Like straight off the bat, this is another one that kind of sounds very reminiscent to something Mr. Kanye West would have done uh, in 2013. You know what I'm saying? Like not only the production style, but Literally, the way Travis is rapping on here from his flow to his vocal interpolations, like to the yelling, to the screaming on the track, it, it, it just sounds like something that could literally fit on Yeezus, man. You know what I'm saying? Like right after I Am A God, this joint plays. Like it's just the influence is so obvious, but I love it, you know what I'm saying? Because obviously we know that Travis is kind of like, you know, a, a, a prodigal son of Kanye West. He's definitely a big influence to him, but it sounds cool to kind of finally hear something that sounds reminiscent to that album since so many people hated on Yeezus when it came out. It's kind of interesting now, 10 years later, that we're getting something so derivative of it. That's pretty cool in that sense. But for the song itself, I definitely did enjoy this one. It was very interesting. At first, the beat caught me off, but I kind of got into it after Travis got into his foes. But I think I definitely got more into it once those simps came in on the second half. Production credits from, let me not butcher his name, Guy Manuel Cristo. That's one half of Daft Punk. So it makes sense why that beat is fucking my speakers up right now. Yeah, this joint definitely hit. Also, shout out to Tizo Touchdown, man. I feel like that guy's been getting looks everywhere. I just listened to him on the Paris, Texas album, uh, which he had a great song on. Um, look, man, Travis, you, you are exceeding my expectations. Three songs into this. I'm very interested to see where this goes. <sighs> Modern Jam, another crazy one. Let's go. Was that Justin Vernon? Bonnie Vare? A little Bonnie Vare action? Mm. 
Sanford. Sanford. What's up, man? That nigga Sanford voice just, he just sound like syrup. This song is the pancakes and Sanford's the syrup, bro. He's the syrup. Okay. Let's ramp it up. Come on. Ah. Ah. Hey, my eye. Another super interesting track, man. Um, this one, I'm definitely, uh, I feel like it was a little difficult to get into the first half. Definitely the most melodic um, we've gotten off the album so far. Features from Bonnie Vare, Justin Verner from Bonnie Vare, and Sanfa. And who, who both, um, I'm not sure what their deliveries on here kind of meant in the grand scheme of things. I think it definitely helped make uh, the atmosphere feel a little bit more prominent. I definitely would have liked more sample in here. I did like the way they play with the vocals on Travis's verse and whatnot. And then suddenly it kind of like the synths come in and it kind of ramps up into this this really um, more aggressive trap beat going in the second half of this thing. And Travis just... He, he came on here like that nigga was like running from somebody or something like like he was rapping like he was looking behind him and like 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 he was in a rush or something and in a good way. Like I really just liked uh, the way that he attacked it on here. And on the last verse on here, he's kind of just like he he's really going in. He's obviously got something to say. He's he's saying fuck all of these niggas. This this talking, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and put smut on his name, and kind of clearly references the incident that happened where people died um, at his festival. He kind of goes in and responds to that. These lyrics saying, I replay them nights and right by my side, all I see is a city of people that ride with me. If they just knew what Scotty would do to jump off the stage and save him a child, the things I created became the most weighted. I gotta find balance and keep me inspired. And it's kind of nice to have like some type of acknowledgement to it. Uh, given that, you know, uh, the response to it was minimal. He did send out that video where everybody just created memes of it, uh, where he's rubbing his face and shit. But I do like that he's trying to give people the truth here and um, kind of just let them know that, you know, it, he has better intentions than to do something like that. It kind of just like that the media d portrays him to be a certain person. Um, I also do like the last... Uh, bar that he had on here It kind of just wraps up the whole thing pretty well He says if I give you a day in my life Or a day in my eyes Don't blink It's crazy that this song is actually out now It's been leaked for a while And I think it was originally supposed to release on Donda or Donda 2 I don't I don't know anymore But originally Ye was on the track uh, Obviously it was a Ye song But I'm not seeing any credits for Kanye West on this one So uh, maybe he took him off And it's only two minutes So let's, let's see where this goes All right, guys, country. The B slaps. The B slaps for sure. I did like the energy that Travis was bringing on this one. Definitely could have used like that extra energy from Ye, though. I, I really wonder, like, you know, why he chose to take him off on here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely could have used the Ye feature for sure. But we still we still vibing, though. I still I still fucked with it. Um, yeah, I like the energy on this one. The da, 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 eh. Sounded very sinister, very menacing. Yeah, there's just something missing about that track. It doesn't have like that that maximalism that we've heard on the past tracks. But yeah, God's Country was cool. Maybe we can grow into it a little bit more. Whoa. What the fuck? 
Woo! This shit sounds insane. I have... Huh. What the fuck? I'm ascending. I'm not here no more. Because I vividly remember watching that trailer and hearing that last end of the song. And I was like, man, this this looks and sounds like something from that Cruel Summer Yeezus era. Uh, or even like a little bit of Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. But man, it's just like, what year am I in? You know what I'm saying? It sounds futuristic but nostalgic at the same time. Just because I was there during, you know, the heyday of that era of... 2010 from like 2013 to where Ye was just on this stylistic wave that we're hearing right now and it's just crazy to hear it in this way um the beat is so heavy on here I honestly couldn't decipher what the fuck was going on when the song first started and Travis sounds hungry once again he's sounded hungry on every fucking track on here and I think that this song was just insane, man. You had the, the those yelling fucking lady at the end of it reverberating between both speakers. It was fucking crazy. This song was it was good though. Um, I definitely gotta. I think I definitely gotta listen to it again. It's a little bit of a sensory overload, not knowing what to expect. But man, the production on here is just fucking insane. It's killer. Production from Travis, Buddy Ross. Evax, John Mayer, um, Noah Goldstein, and Wonder Girl on here. And um, Noah Goldstein and Wonder Girl seem to be on damn near every track on here. So definitely can see what the production style is on here and where he's going with it. But but man, that's crazy. And if I'm not mistaken, I heard I think I heard Drake on on uh the last that last little bit on here. Um, and it kind of helped to finally uh you know present the actual theme of the album title utopia because um you know i was trying to figure out where he's actually going to go with it um but it kind of seems like you know to what drake is saying to this young lady on here that uh utopia is pretty much wherever you are and um i can get i can get down with that you know what i'm saying it's it's whatever you want it to be so Wait, 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 wait. We gotta run that shit back, okay? Get it! Let's go! Woo! Where's 21 Savage? We need 21 on this shit. Fuck, yo. What? 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 What the fuck is going on? Is you fucking crazy, nigga? Huh. 
Sí. 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 What the fuck? Literally, literally as the beat changed from Drake to Travis on the second verse, bro, it started fucking storming, raining, pouring down, raining outside. Literally. Check the video back. And when I look back out there, I look to the side over here, I was like, oh shit. Did the song just make it storm out this bitch? Like, yo, what is going on? <laughs> what is going on? <sighs> what the fuck? Okay. Drake and Travi are back. They're back from the shit show that they caused with Sicko Mode. One of the biggest songs that uh, we've heard from the past couple of years. The song was huge, did hella numbers. Um, and it was just a great song. It was such a fucking moment. You know, she's in love with who I am. Back in high school, I used to bust into the dance. You know what I'm saying? Like, like everybody knows the first couple of bars. So it, Travis just, he created a moment with that one. And this one sounds darker. It sounds messier, hungrier. You know what I'm saying? Like Drake on here, you know what I'm saying? Regardless if, you know, we see him as this uh, guy who wants to uh, shoot up the clubs or not. Sounded convincing on here. You know what I'm saying? I really like the delivery from him. You know, the I'm a guy in the back and I'm calling the shots type of shit. You feel me? Yeah. And now, and now that I'm kind of like rereading the lyrics, I can definitely kind of hear uh, some shots, you know, at, at Pusha maybe. You know what I'm saying? Uh, especially with the last lines here. You lucky that Vogue was suing because I would have been with the Wasa in Paris and shit. And, you know, it's obvious that Pusha was in fashion week. Um, and, you know, he's saying that, you know, oh, well, you lucky that Vogue was suing because we would have came to fashion week and we would have came with the... <laughs> okay, Drake. You know, right. You didn't, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know if anybody was stopping you in that one. But, um... Yeah, man, Drake is sounding hungry on this one. You know what I'm saying? I can appreciate the hunger on this one. But Travis, uh, Travis kind of just, he, he he wasn't playing around with nothing. You know what I'm saying? He, he he came on here sounding like, you know, he was ready to like, I don't know, eat a fucking elephant or something. Like, you know, he, he just, I, I loved it when, when people just matched the energy of the production on here. And I think that Travis does that effortlessly on here. He knows he has the energy to do it. He knows what energy people expect from him. And he does his dad on this. You know what I'm saying? I did like a couple verses on here. <laughs> I'll shoot your ass in Walmart like I'm the baby. That was funny as fuck. Oh, man. And I think my favorite part about this song is that the beat switches. You know what I'm saying? And I know the beat switches are such a, it's such a thing these days. Everybody's fucking doing them. Um, you know, it's sometimes it's just not needed, but and here it was so tasteful the way they did it starts off with Drake on that, um, just really dark, uh, trap beat here. Nothing too crazy about it, but it was good. You know what I'm saying? And once Travis comes in, it's pretty much the same beat, but added with a lot of these dark scents in it, uh, and, and kind of just encapsulated with this world of atmospheric sounds and it kind of just sounds like a dark cloud comes over the beat and then after that it kind of just rolls into uh that last uh more upbeat tempo trap beat in the back and i could kind of tell that that was the take keith part of it going on because it kind of sounds reminiscent to that upbeat sound of sickle mode as well but this one sounds a little darker um and travis just goes in again man i can't, i just can't stress enough the production on here is fucking insane it's insane the way that they're doing this uh the way that you know these ideas aren't so aren't so new but i feel like it's blending a lot of what kanye was trying to do on yeezus um in that era of music that he was doing and the kind of world that travis scott has helped influence so much um and kind of just blending them together and it's it's coming out pretty perfect right now so meltdown fucking fire fire shit i'm scared That Cardi?
Oh shit. Form the fucking mosh pit. That don't even sound like him. <laughs> like what the fuck? He's such like a fucking mystical character that I don't even I don't even know what his fucking voice really sounds like no more. What the fuck? All right, uh, Fiend was interesting. Definitely kind of sounded like, um, I don't know. It sounded like it wanted to be Playboy Cardi song, but also uh, wanted to be a Kanye West song at the same time. Um, and it just didn't really know what to choose because those drums kind of like, um, I don't know, it just reminds me of, of some Kanye shit. And I know that's like just so... I keep saying that, but I'm sorry. I can't run from it here. Cardi was almost unrecognizable on the verses. I mean, I was like, who the fuck is this? You know what I'm saying? He, he goes for this dark, deeper register on here. Um, and kind of like uh, a weird delivery as far as his flow on here. Um, I was kind of having a hard time getting into it a little bit. Um, but the, the, the verse kind of like... Seems like it anticipates like that mosh pit culture. That fiend, fiend, fiend. Like, you know, people that listen to Destroy Lonely and, and fucking uh, uh, maybe like Trippy Red or like, you know, some shit like that all day will probably love this song. Um, but I thought it was I thought it was cool. I got to listen to it some more. The first listen, I was kind of thrown off with Cardi and shit. But um, it was a banger, though. It was a banger. I got I to gotta definitely let it grow on me a little bit. Um, but yeah, Fiend was interesting. Hey. Ha! Get it! Let's go, hey! Y'all see? Ah. Fuck. Damn, y'all say? Bonnie Bear again? Ah. Wow. Bro, we haven't heard Travis like this in a while. He's just, he sound, this sounds just like those Al Faro days, the days before rodeo, rodeo era, to where his rap cadence was, you know, just like he was doing now, like Travi. Ah. <laughs> Fuck. Del Resto. Um, Yonsei and fucking Travis and Bonnie Vare as well. This is one of my favorite tracks so far, bro. I, I feel like there was just such a, a forcefulness about this production. And I feel like Beyonce really helped captivate that feeling. I loved her vocals on here. She just gives such a such an airiness, but at the same time, there's such a force and power um, with her delivery. She gives that same thing on here. I loved Travis' verse on here as well. Definitely reminiscent to something, the rodeo days, days before rodeo, Al Faro. But I just love how heavy and 
how how maximalized this beat is and i feel like this album is at its best when you're you're just encapsulated fully your speakers are left with no empty sounds and it's just it's just all music you know what i'm saying like i, I just really love that energy that this song is giving man and um just shouts out to travis on this for keep pushing that energy, pushing the wave. I feel like, you know, I have a hard time finding music that kind of gives me this feeling. Um, and I feel like he's definitely like scratching an itch for me. So shout out to Travis on this.